Hey ya people, welcome back to Katawa Shoujo. Last episode, we finally had the chance to go to the library, and we met a new character. But we did end on a little bit of a cliffhanger. And that was Hasao getting startled by a sound, and nearly dropping all of his things. Now, this episode, we can find out what that sound was, what the source was. And it seems to have been a person. And I'm just going to take a guess, since we're in his hallway. It's probably going to be Kenji, unless he happens to live in like a co-ed dorm sort of situation. So, um, I'm going to change his voice up a little bit if I can do it right now. Because last time I did Kenji, he had a very plain voice. And uh, let's go for a nerdier one this time. He, he kind of looks nerdy. In the rude way, not in the nice way. Hey, who is it? I turn around to see who's talking to me. It's Kenji. He seems to be in a friendly mood. Although the light glinting off his glasses in the dark gives him a sinister look. Well, I guess we were right about Kenji. It's just me. This makes him pause and licks it, lick his lips nervously. Just you, huh? Who is me? I don't know anyone called me. Are you some new guy again? His voice is suddenly strained and quick. Yes, but we've met before. Yesterday. Kenji. Are you alright there, buddy? I don't think so. I would remember someone who I met only yesterday. When was that? What day is it today? Try to ignore him. Is he joking or what? Maybe... Maybe... He... Maybe he's into drugs, you know? We'll, we'll, give him, we'll give him that much, you know, benefit of the doubt. If it's not drugs, then he has really, really bad problems. Drugs are bad enough by themselves, but if you have the uh, effects of drugs without the drugs, it's kind of scarier. Prove that we met before. You live across the hall. You're Kenji. <gasps> oh my god! You know, how could you find out? How could you? Kenji jumps back, his eyes filled with an uncomprehending fear. Also, this is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, just he's got his teeth revealed and just... I think I see his eyes for once. Right there, little dots in the middle of his glasses. How do you know my name? Damn, this can only mean one of two things. Either we have met and you just telling the truth, and I just can't remember it. Or, the more likely of the two, you are a spy. He pauses. Hmm, I think I heard about this in philosophy. Okam's, Okam's addition. You add on to something. The more unlikely it is, the more likely it is to truly happen. A psychic spy. His eyes dart around me, trying to peek into my room. Although it's hard to believe he can see anything through those thick glasses. His mood swung from friendly to manic in less than a minute. I'm not psychic. How do I know that? I'm not a mind reader. Not like you, you filthy mutant. Kenji points a finger in my face, damningly. Thank goodness this really isn't the X-Men universe. It becomes scary right now. Unlike you! St stop, stop that, man. We, we met yesterday. What's wrong with you? I live in this room. Please. You're one of the very few side characters in this game. At least, from what I've heard. Lies. If you think you can pass this as Sao because I'm legally blind, you are sorely mistaken. You don't even look like him. I mean, the resemblance is real, real slim. So is my vision, maybe. Maybe at a distance, but who do you think you're kidding? I want to grab him by the shoulders and shake him. Exasperated, I rub my eyes and let out a heavy sigh. <sighs> oh, Kenji. It's going to be a long, long let's play. Stay there. Oh, Kenji comes closer, one careful step at a time. I stay still, as he assault me physically, although I doubt he could do much damage, even if he did. Yeah, I i mean, we've seen Hasao a few times, and sure, he has heart problems, but he's hes probably fine physically, you know? Oh, wait, I see it now. Damn, it really is you. Damn, I'm so happy to see you, man. I was scared. Sighing again. And then, once again, for good measure, I step backwards, just in case. 
<sighs> Step. What's up, man? You don't look too good, I think. Something wrong? I don't know. Just that something stupid happened to me. This weird guy who is maybe a friend of mine now, who lives across the hall from me, suspected that I wasn't actually me and was tripping on some sort of shrooms. And I felt like I might be assaulted physically. And Oh, also, um, a few stupid things, you know, actually, even if, even if you discount this one. I can't get a proper touch on other people here, and I have no idea if it's because of me or because of them. I don't know why I'm telling this to Kendra. It's not like we've had any contact either. But then again, he, even if he told it to anybody else, they wouldn't believe him. That's rough, dude. Yeah, I'm sorry about calling you a psychic spy and all, but you can never be too careful. It's a hard reality we live in. I'm slowly starting to think that Kenji isn't necessarily living in the same reality as the rest of us. Just slowly, you know. I'm gonna keep on giving him the benefit of the doubt. That it's not inside, it's outside in some sort of drug. I hope to God. You see, this is how it is, this world, kid. There's no justice, you see. Because I don't. See, even when I lose, I win. Because I don't lose the lesson. What, what, what does that even mean? It doesn't matter. He dismisses it flatly with a wave of his hand, and a wave of his wand appears his diary to write down a new note of how the day has been. It's been very good, except for that suspected spy. So, what happened? Why the long face? Do you have a long face? Do you have a face? Is that why you're here? It's nothing. I just scared some girl off accidentally, you know, just accidentally. Literally, dude, she she actually ran away from me. It was was my fault, really. I, I think I'm I'm not really used to all this yet, you know. A girl, a, a cute one. Cute, she cute. Please, please tell me. Cute. That's a hard question. She had a nice body and really beautiful hair, but the face, ooh. Burns. Burn marks. Ah. I guess it could go either way. Oh! This is a choice. Personally, I think she's cute. And he thinks it could go either way. So I'm gonna take player bias. And I'm gonna say cute. Yeah, cute, I guess. I mean, yeah, it's just some burn marks. Like, she's still cute. I knew it! There are a lot of cute girls here. Strangely dis. Fortunate mount. I believe this is one of the dark secrets of this school. It's a trap for visual novel characters to enter into. I must be one of them. I try to warn you, man, but did you listen? My story is the darker one, the secret one, the hidden story of Katawa Shoujo. In my story, there are lots of sad, sad things that happen. In my world, there really are spies, man. I don't remember any such warning. Dark secrets? Yes. Dark secrets. Extremely dark. Like a black hole. Light can't even escape. Have you noticed that the number of girls in the school is slightly but significantly higher than the number of boys? It's like 60 to 40. He turns his head to the left and stares off into the distance at nothing. I mean, uh, it, usually I've seen a school's girls' numbers are a little bit higher. Sometimes with that higher. You know, that much higher, but usually not that much higher, so it's kind of disproportionate. It's just, I don't know. Uh, he turns his head to the left and stares off in, into the distance at nothing. And I realize that I just repeated the line and didn't hit the button. Whoops. I can see, no, he just stared twice. That will be, that will now be canon. He, he did it twice. That is something I would expect from Kenji. Why is it like this? I mean, to the untrained eye, it doesn't appear to be that bad. But that is a full 20%, and I have a trained eye, okay? One would think that a school with such a huge pool of women would be a man's dream, but no, I'm gay, let's go. Wait, what? What I am about to tell you could blow your mind. Are you ready? Because I think the game is ready. The music stopped. Kenji, what game? What are you talking about? I don't know where this is going, but I think I won't be missing much by cutting out now. And this is where the video- I'm just kidding, guys. No, I am not ready. I only get as far as turning the doorknob.
before Kenji starts talking again, showing that he doesn't really care if my mind is blown or not. He just wants to do something. And that I don't care for. Oh, what's his music? Are we entering his visual novel? I believe that this school is a battleground, the site of a feminist infiltration. Of all things, Kenji, feminism? I'm disappointed. I was hoping for like some evil person who wanted to rule the world. Reborn Hitler or something. No. Like maybe reborn evil magic Hitler? Number two? No. This disparity in the number of men to women is a clear sign of how far they've come. In the case this cold war turns hot, they will have superiority in numbers. Just another skirmish in the eternal war against the forces of the feminists. They're everywhere. In Japan, women outnumber men. It's not a 60-40 split, but it's only a matter of time, man. <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> Somehow, his voice is actually not that pleasant to do. I'll get used to it. Or maybe I don't have to. Even in America, women are the majority by a hair. They're building up their numbers. In the past, the buildup of a military has always been the clear sign of imminent war. The Death Eaters are coming. They will eat your happiness. Japan is just the first step. Our economy is badass. The country itself is a small and isolated, yet a huge part of the Pacific in terms of political value. The perfect target. They are so cunning. As expected. Of woman. Well. So I was kind of, you know, hoping Kenji would be kind of cool, but I guess he's a paranoid misogynist so far. Oh well. Let's carry on. Soon the day will come when Kenji's voice trails off ominously. When that is why you can't trust them. All right, they will string you along and then kill you just as they killed me. You will end up just like me. Oh hell no! Can't stop myself from blurting it out. I have had enough of your bullshit, Kenji. Me, as a sound, not just me as the player. Hey, what the hell does that mean? You said it, not me. It's the best I can think of. So you're not supposed to say something like that. Damn, so rude. Where was I? Oh yeah, vast feminist conspiracy. Stop, stop it, stop. I lost you, wait, way back there somewhere. Somewhere around feminist infiltration is when I tuned out. Too hard to follow, it's cool, I have some graphs and stuff in my room and puppets. You like puppets? Hand puppets, I promise you. Puppets? I make YouTube videos with them sometimes. No, no, no puppets. You don't like puppets? Okay, gr graphs are still cool though, right? Right? He speaks energetically, responding almost before I'm done talking. Move his hands in an animated way as he continues to write on. He's really quite a storyteller. I, I think he's got talent there. It's just that somebody needs to write the stories he tells for him. This is too strange. I had him pegged as relatively normal. But it's clear that I was wrong now. Something on your mind, dude? I mean, that's what I asked you before, but you know, I never really gave you too much help there. Just thinking about what it's like to be the last sane man in an insane world. The Sao. 20... Actually, I don't remember when this game was made, but it's not 2016. Kenji frowns, looking deeply upset. You mean that's you? That can't be, because I'm the last sane man in a sane world. That is my dream, and you can't just steal a man's dream. You really are insane. What the hell? It can't be two last sane men. We invalidate the whole last part. And that part is kind of important. There can only be one. We will duel, you and me. Oh, <coughs> right after. <coughs> right after Zubby finds some honey for his throat. This is supposed to be nerdy. Kind of is. I don't know anymore. There can only be one. Oh, yeah, like, like in Highlander, which Zubby hasn't watched yet. And in the end, there is only one. Dude, th th that was the point. I'm not reading that line. We don't need to. 
I've never seen anyone talk so heatedly and so defensively about absolutely nothing before. Anyway, if you wait here, I can get my graphs. I also have a list of the other dark and complex conspiracies that the school holds as tangled as... Quick, finish my analogy for me via pile. I'm going to go to bed now. It is extremely late. That doesn't sound like an analogy, but whatever. Good. It's good. You know, it's close enough. Trademark. I like you. You, you seem like a cool dude. Most people here don't understand what I'm talking about when I try to explain the vast feminist conspiracy to them. Denial is a terrible thing. Later. He claps me on the back and then vanishes into his room so quickly and quietly it's like he didn't even open the door, but instead walked right through it like a ghost. Oh no, I hope he's not a ghost. That he could follow me. More than anybody else could. I don't know if I can fully digest what just happened, so I give up and just go to my room, kicking off my shoes before falling face first into bed, crying tears of misery, having to listen to that. It takes me some time to relax and get up so I can get started on homework. Just because, just because the sheets are cool and comforting against my cheeks, and it feels good just lying there with my eyes closed. This school is like some kind of bizarre and surreal island. It's isolated on top of a mountain, and each person is stranger than the last. I just can't seem to fit in. What irony. One would think that fitting in a place that's made for people who are unfit for anywhere else would be easy. Maybe I'm trying too hard. Although I say that, it doesn't help to take the edge off, and the words are left echoing off my empty walls. I guess it's not as bad as I expected, though. This place is really... Th this place really is more a school, and less a hospital pretending it's school than I thought it would be. I have nothing else. The scenery is beautiful, so you know. As long as I'm not staring at my wall, I, if I look outside, it's good. Open one eye, seeing the school books and bottles of pills arranged side by side on my desk. Maybe this place is too much like normal school after all. Alright guys, oh, transition, we've moved on to a new day, sadly, cliffhanger was a bit anticlimactic, climatic, but here we go, new day, I feel very tired this morning, probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day, on top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I started doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. I mean, unless the light is somehow blocking the, uh, the work. I have a lot of work to do, you know, it's just... Uh, what are you complaining about? There's nothing on the left side of the board. But there might be something on the right. It's a weird teacher. Wouldn't he want to put it on both sides of the boards? If it's uh, school for disabled people because you know I don't know some of them might have difficulty seeing although then again people with vision problems are in the other room no I guess it makes sense I don't have a problem with that now though Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether I or not I've decided to join the student council even if it's just one day I wouldn't put it past them to try and I don't have an answer for them if they do so the situation is convenient for me about 10 minutes into class Hanukkah walks in and takes a seat and the little one looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her lateness. I? I mean, I don't even look at her. I just kind of... I smell her. I just... I say... That smells like Hanukkah. He does, however, stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. I turn my head and see that Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune gives me a smile that is equal parts cute and menacing. This is a smile that says... We have you now. There's no escape. Hee hee. Hee 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 hee. it looks like we're together again. Yay, yay. Misha leans sideways. Well, Shizune pushes her desk close to mine. There really is no escape now unless I were to jump through the window. And I might be tempted to do that. You know, the window isn't the best option, sadly. Dot dot dot. What's wrong, hee -chan? Dot dot dot. Oh, Yi-chan, have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, Yi-chan. We were talking about it after you left, and it would be rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? <laughs> I'm so happy that you two are able to have a laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. 
Now that that's over, Shizune steps back into serious mode and smacks today's assignment with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and important way. When I actually look at the stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. Well, there really wasn't much on the board. I must have exaggerated quite a bit. I almost went to say something about how her rush to get started seems a little bit much considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. Yeah, it seems like the workload doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. Oh, there she is. Oh, Hanako. While I'm reading, let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. Oh, it looks like she's working alone. That's depressing. Can we help her? I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. Think back to how shy she is. It's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who? Hee-chan? Her, Hanako. Over there. Did she always work alone? And I know she's there. I'm not this blind. This episode. I think so, Hee-chan. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? Is this pity? Are you going to help her out of pity? Is that really helping her, Hee-chan? Or should you just stay with us? Make your choice. I, w I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Mm, no, I don't think that would be a good idea, Hee-chan. No, it wouldn't be a good idea at all. What? Why not? Hee-chan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffled around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lilting up-and-down quality present in everything she says. Ha! Ah, ah. Is that is that lilting enough for you, Hisao? Just because, Hee-chan? By now, Shizune has had noticed our conversation. It makes me realize again how Misha has been sounding everything she's been saying this whole time. Oh, she doesn't look pleased at all. These two do not get along. I, I wonder why. Which means if we can get to be friends with Hanako, we will be free of the demons. What, Shichan? The friend of my enemy is not my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not going to say that. Yes, we must be friends, Hanako. This will be our new mission. Somebody put it up on the board. You said it anyway. I know, Hee-chan. It's fine of you over here. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her I wouldn't be able to understand a thing she's in there saying, and vice versa. Is that uh, also why she signs things all the time? So there is never a conversation Shizune will be left out of. So you will leave her out of things. But you will not leave Shizune out of things. That's a interesting standard to get there, Misha. Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hee-chan. Forget about that other problem, because it's not a problem for us. All right, I guess we did. Oh well, maybe we'll have an opportunity later? We finished with the time to spare, and I decided to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria. Because frankly, the food so far has been... Subpar, if I can put it anyway. The sense Shizune and Misha arguing amongst themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we have time to go all the way there. And what about the bill? I'm broke. My parents don't give me any money for uh, enjoying myself, at least not as much as I used to. You, you, you see the school, it's expensive. It might be pretty, but it's expensive. Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Maybe. They seem so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. Maybe I can sneak away, look over my shoulders, toward the back of the classroom. There she is. She seems to be studying her notes from the previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks, the ones with the actual box lunches mixed in and chattering like everyone else, only interrupted by short bouts of eating. But when I watch Hanako, it feels like I'm the only one who can see her, almost as if she was invisible, sort of hiding in plain sight. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class in her own accord? Out of those two options, I'd say it's more of number two, maybe a little bit of number one. But she might be ostracized, which is kind of like bullying, and probably more painful, or equally painful. I see her look over her shoulder toward the classroom's rear door. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned a page since I've started watching her. She might have noticed. She must be thinking of how to make a break for it. Quick, I'm gonna stop her this time. I guess she's waiting for someone. 
what to do. Ooh, choices. We're getting a lot of choices this episode. Should I read my book or should I go talk with Hanako? Hmm. On one hand, I already read a lot and uh, solved like two problems with the help of Misha and Shizune. On the other hand, I can uh, I can go and talk to Hanako. What will my choice be? Will I carry on and live with these two? Or will I be free of Misha and Shizune? And will I start to help someone who might be feeling very lonely? And cute. She is cute. There are totally no ulterior motives. You know, guys, since the last cliffhanger wasn't that good, I think we'll we'll stay off the cliffhangers this time. We'll make the choice to go talk with Hanako. Alright? And, uh, still feel bad for making her run away yesterday, so I'd better say something. I will say we'll figure out what that something is next time. Because... It's not quite a cliffhanger. It's more like a good place to stop. So, bye bye for now.